rescue me this morning. Anybody who watched the live show this morning saw that we had some smoke coming out. Things weren't working quite right. So Darwin's been here five minutes and now it's come up 150 degrees on the top. We have no more smoke and, and we have the second uh, the vortex the is, vortex is going. Is going. So Darwin's gonna walk through what it was I did wrong this morning so that it didn't work and um, what you think of, of how it's going so far. The pebbles are still warm from last night. I closed it down at six that the stove needed to be taken up. So what did I do right. wrong yesterday? Putting it in the bench and what did I do wrong this morning? Well, yesterday she started it from a cold start and she had it closed off going straight out the chimney. No, I didn't. You didn't? Mm -mm. I didn't close it. I couldn't figure out which way it went, so it, I had it going through the bench. That's what I mean. Oh, gotcha. You had it yeah. closed off going out through the chimney and opened up going through the yeah. bench. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of a little bit of a precarious situation in that I'm doing something that I don't know that any other rocket mass system has ever done, which is off of the exhaust portal from where it comes out of a downdraft, it takes almost a two foot drop down into the bench. And everything's about negative and, and positives. When this, when the fire and the gases go out the exhaust, the initial exhaust portal up into the heat riser, they go through the vortex area where they get an, an additional rush of oxygen through the portals that I put in. And I put the portals in at a certain angle so it spins the... Do you want me to show it really quick? I can show it really quick. Oh, can you, you guys will have to tell me if you can see the fire. Where is it? I have to get it just the right angle or you can't see it. Where is it? It's just glowing in there. It's just an inferno. There we go. Oh, kind of. There we go. Now you can see it. See that glowing bit? That is the secondary air intake that he made with glue sticks. See that? That 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 glowing bit right right there? That's what he's talking about. So that's the vortex. So <clears throat> any you want to have the burn chamber completely loaded up and any additional gases and get it burning hot and any additional gases that don't get burnt when they get that additional oxygen in the vortex chamber they take off. Within like two minutes of being here, I had it vortexing again. Yeah. And one thing that I did, I took out, I took out this grate. The grate is kind of a, I thought it needed the extra oxygen to rush under, but it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Mm -hmm. It, it either doesn't sucks need the all grade. the flame off or... It sucks all the flame off. It puts cold air in it. And then it starts smoldering or it just... The cold air goes straight through and it doesn't let it get up to temperature. So if you just lay the logs in there um, without that and let the air rush directly on the oh, logs... This too. This, this, this made... This makes a world of a difference. Not using this... It, it's not the same stove. Well, uh, at startup. Yeah, when you, yeah, not not during the burn, but when you're just start, trying to get it started so that you have a prolonged hot enough. Flame. These are little fire starter pellets, and if you haven't ever seen my video on them, you can put a 40 mile an hour wind, 50 mile an hour wind on these, and they just turn into an inferno, and they help it start up really quickly. Um, it's either and we something used it our like. First time, but I didn't use it yesterday. Yeah, it's either something like that, or you've got to use uh, some really dry kindling. Um. <clears throat> but but about the bench, what I did yesterday is is I did have smoke yesterday, and I did have some creosote dripping at the bottom. And Darwin just walked me through what I had done wrong, and and why at one point I had a lot of white smoke going up the chimney. Right, it's a lot of vapor. For one, it wasn't black smoke. No, it wasn't black smoke. Um, she needed to get the system completely heated up before she opened up the valve and ran it through the bench. You get it completely heated up and run it through the bench, the actual flue in the chimney um, take over and the air actually accelerates up through the chimney because it's insulated. Cause yesterday and it takes it away the negative of that two foot drop down into the bench. Right. So everything's negative and positive. The fire rushing up the heat riser 
is a positive. And it creates a positive pressure that forces the air down. Hot air does not want to go down, period. But it forces the hot air down and out the exhaust. If it has to take another two foot drop through a cold bench right then, that's in a testament to the right. to the chimney in and of itself that she was even able to get it started doing that. Yeah, and it never the, smoked. It, the the bench itself <laughs> never smoked. The chimney never got a hundred above one hundred and fifty degrees, which means why was it still going up? It, I, it never got above one hundred and fifty degrees. Well, and that's at the elbow where it goes yeah. into the window insert. So, you know, right now. We're at about 300 degrees where it goes out there. And, every, and, and we're almost 500 yesterday. degrees on top. I'll see if I can show them. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. So that's, sorry, I can't really see very well. There's the chimney, which it never got above 150 yesterday. And then it's at 475 here, if you guys right. can see it. And so it's, there's some operator error here. Well, I mean, I... I have an infrared thermometer, but it um, shuts off at over a thousand degrees. And I shoot that infrared thermometer into the vortex, and it just Goes shuts off. Yeah. It's and what I did when I was doing test burns at my house in the vortex, I just put some chunks of aluminum in the vortex, and they just melted right away. So I know it's over twelve hundred and fifty degrees in the vortex, right? Because. Um, so, I, I know there's a lot of people out there saying we're running three and 4,000 degrees in our rocket mass heater. I don't know how they'd even determine exactly how they're running that much. Right. But any additional gases that didn't get burned, over 1,200 degrees is plenty to make them flash. Well, and when we first put it in, when we didn't have the pea gravel, it was turning cherry red on the top. I mean, it was just, it oh, was just going. Yeah, when we didn't have the pea gravel and have something to radiate that heat off, um, it, it was so it, hot. It, it was, was it was miserable really hot in here. And this is not sealed at the bottom. There's a little gap down at the bottom, so when these pea gravel gets warm, air will actually come in and radiate up through the pea gravel. So that pea gravel is always drawing heat off of there. Freestyle Farming says, tell Darwin I want to see him make an Air Creek pizza oven. I think your wife... Yeah, we're doing... That. That's one of the projects that's coming. We, the first one we got coming up is... Uh, and we already started on it last night. Is we're doing the raised flower bed and the interlocking blocks out of a Air Creek cob mixture. So it's going to be Air Creek infused with straw. And it's really cool. I'm going to do a, a couple of videos about some of the properties and characteristics of Aircrete. You take a piece of Aircrete that's all cured out and you just barely touch it into water and it just wicks the water right up. So And tell them how I misspoke. Oh, this is not um, Aircrete. This is fire block. When I did the initial test burn, um just on the burn chamber before I ever poured the aircrete insulation around it. I just took a caulking gun and put some fire block in there because that burn chamber actually is only tack welded, just two small tack welds on the front and one on the back. And I want it that way on purpose. I got nervous, even though I know better. There were people on there that say, you should expect warping and this and that. And I knew it wouldn't warp. Warping comes from this. It's like the Yukon stove. You know how it warps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, here's, when metal heats up, it expands. When it gets cold, it shrinks. And so if you have a huge uh, temperature difference on one side than on the other, then you're going to get warping. In this situation, where the whole burn chamber is completely surrounded with insulation, it's going to heat up about the same and it's going to cool down slowly about the same and it's never going to warp. I, we've te I've test burned it tons of times right now. The homesteading mad scientist at work. <laughs> Freestyle farming likes you. <laughs> I well, hope you, guys you know what? I'm an old farmer. I grew up on right? a farm and you know, we did our own mechanic work. Uh, we did our own welding. I've been welding since I was 11 years old. Yeah. And you do have a video coming up of how to build your old welder, right? Sunday. Oh, I'm, I'm going to build a spot welder, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So anything else? Oh, Darwin is putting a handle on the valve today so that it's easier to turn. It's soft metal, and so if we, if okay, we don't this, put it on. Okay, this is what I used, a really kind of a sheet metal bar um, to do the valve in there. And I needed a way to connect to it, and so I, I, I found these uh, expansion bolts. I'm going to cut oh, the handle oh. down where it needs to be. Stick the expansion bolt in, expand it in there tight, and then tighten it, double nut and tighten down the handle on it. And then I'm going to mark on the deal, bench open, bench closed. Yeah, because <laughs> I looked at it the other day and I'm like, which one was it and how do I turn it and how do I know that it's actually open? My wife got on <sighs> Julie's live feed yesterday and she's like, Darwin, come here. And I'm like, she doesn't have the bench shut off. <laughs> yeah, I had it fully open. I had it fully open. And, and I wasn't sure. The thing that I wasn't sure of is like, no matter what I did, the, that one stayed hot. And actually, the, the one down into the bench was the hottest one. It wasn't the one going up and out. It was the one that went down that stayed the hottest. Yeah, that's the way it should it be. It was crazy to me that like it wants to go into the bench. There's no smoke leaking. And so I'm like, I'll just let it go then. I won't close it. And that's Which a testament to, to my hot air vacuum. Yeah. And I heard people, I got a comment yesterday saying on our video saying that this is not a rocket mass heater. That at least you didn't design it as one. Because a rocket mass heater doesn't use the exhaust to create suction and to make it rocket. And that's not what this is doing. All that exhaust is doing is taking and adding an element of acceleration up the chimney to negate the net negative you get from dropping two feet down into the bench. That's it. Um, I needed a way. People said I couldn't do it. There's no way it could be done that you have to take a 2% rise out of your exhaust and go around. And, and that's conventional wisdom and that's true. So I just had to figure out a way to negate that net negative and the way I did it was to create an acceleration system outside and all it takes is to be about 150 degrees and this thing will slowly 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 accelerate Very if you're slowly. running through the bench first <laughs> if, if you get that uh, outside flue up to you know like, like now it's running about 280 yeah. and that's great if you get it running 280 for about 20 minutes and warm up the flue it sucks it through the bench faster than it can um, cool it off right and everything works perfect so you have to leave the valve closed to the bench for the first like 20 30 minutes open it up and everything's fine yeah so did you want to open it now or are you going to just put the lever on i'm going to just put the lever on and then i'll mark on it and okay you can open it so i'm going to just cut off the the bad part because it was, it was soft, and then as it got hot, it seemed to get softer. No, it's just because it's just being bent in and out, in and out. It's just a thin sheet metal shaft. Just don't touch that chimney. It is hot. Yeah. This is not the best <laughs> cheap, uh, metal blade. Alright. Looks like it's coming though. Okay, I got it. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we have our expansion bolt. And I'll just leave that on. If I lost it in there, I'd be really sad. Right. So basically what this is, is just, it's a concrete fastener mm -hmm. for a 3 8 hole. You put it in, it has this tapered in. 
and as I suck it up, it'll expand out on that steel, which is what I'm going to do right now. But in order to do that, I don't think I saw any more comments. Let's see. Um, how small can this be made? I'm curious for a greenhouse project. That's Uncle Wimpy LaFrance. Well, this is running a three inch portal already. That's about the smallest I'd ever want to make it. She has a pretty tiny house and I didn't, this was about as small as I ever wanted to make it. And once it really gets going and you have some coals in there, it's super quiet. You wouldn't know that there was a fire going in there unless you knew there was a fire going in there. It's the loudest thing in here is the little is the little fan that keeps things going. Is it feeling happier? We'll see. Okay, we're going to go finish this, and you guys make sure to go check out the Honeydew Carpenter. He has the Air Creek projects and how he built the super heat vacuum chimney that is capable of pulling smoke down two feet and then through a bench without any smoke problems. So, um, Freestyle Farming said, your bench looked larger than that with the bed made up on it. How do you like that fan? Does it move much air? The fan is nice. It does move the air pretty well. And... Um, Let's see the bed. The bed probably does look a little bit larger with the with it with the lid down. Right now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get that moisture out of the rocks. Uh, they weren't wet when we put them in, but they were. They had just been outside, so they've been collect, collecting some moisture. Some Eva Stan's breeding room said, "How are the chickens doing? They are doing fine. They're back in Tulsa with Nikki, and um, it sounds like the ducks are starting to get ready to set and get some ducklings hatched." So, gonna go get kids back on school. Wanted to update you guys from the cold start I did this morning versus the man himself coming out and helping me get some of the bugs worked out. So, we're still working on it, and it'll be exciting to see. We all, we have about a month left that we can burn with it. It, it we still have cold nights in May, but April is pretty cold. So, um, we will get back to it. Make sure you go check out Honeydew Carpenter. We'll talk to you later.